first time I did this was a couple years ago. And what I did was I just talked about some really great memoirs, really great books that had these very narcissistic characters in them. The changing times, really changing times. These are actually memoirs written about narcissistic abuse. I think what happens with memoirs is, well, for one thing, I'm, I'm trying to write one. It's very, very difficult. And I can say that these books were not, that was going to help to me because, because the, the stories were just very different. One thing is, I, I think that when you're writing about childhood, it's significantly easier because you're know, forgiving of children. You my know. story starts when I'm in my 30s and, and I make mistakes and I, you know, I'm, I'm a definitely a flawed character. But, you know, people are complex and I think it's worthwhile to tell a complex exactly. story. In okay. memoirs, I think what, we're tr what we like to do is we like to be able to identify with a character in a story. And for narcissistic abuse victims, that's usually not easy to do. Usually we're watching movies or reading books and the stories are a lot different from ours. We didn't have healthy families, we didn't have maybe healthy relationships, and so stories about those families and about those relationships can sometimes be heartbreaking. You know, can sometimes make you, it will make you feel isolated and alone, but also just, you know, break your heart about what you didn't get, what you didn't have, what you really needed. And one, one reason I, I really want to write my book, as hard as it is, and I'm, you know, getting my, forcing myself to do it, is because I really do believe that I've had such an extreme story. At least I know one person that was in a worse situation than they're in and they made it back and they're okay. You know, made it through. We all need inspiration like that. We all need inspiration like that. One of the only people that I could, that I, I was kind of held out there was Gloria Vanderbilt. While she was wealthy and a celebrity, so I didn't ever have that, but she also had a terrible family. And she also met up with men that treated her terribly. And she had, she'd been em, embezzled by business partners. She even had children. She got estranged from two of her children. And she had a son that committed suicide right in front of her. I mean, this really, really painful stuff, never properly loved, and yet she believed in love, and she was a good mother, and she has, you know, ended up with a really great relationship with her youngest son, Anderson Cooper, and, and being an artist into her 90s. And I was always inspired by her, and so you need to have things like that. You need to have people famous like that. One. This is the most famous one. This is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is a story about a young child actor whose mother pushed her into acting. She didn't want to be doing acting. Pushed her into acting and used her, you know, set her up, basically trained her in an eating disorder that, you know, tormented her for years. And she pushed her to do auditions and pretty soon she was supporting the family and, and doing a lot of really, really inappropriate, emotionally abusive things to her daughter. And it took Jeanette a while to figure out that things were just really wrong. She had several older brothers. She was the only girl in the family. And the parents were had split up. And her mother also got really sick. Um, her mother would, had cancer a couple of different times. And that also became another reason why she wanted to please her and take care of her. And it was kind of this always looming threat that she was going to die. And of course, as children, that's a terrible fear, you know, fear inducing thing. Ultimately, what ends up happening is she has an awakening moment. She starts to grow up as a, as a, you know, an adult person. When her mother dies, it's been wrong with the way that she has grown accustomed to thinking. Really well written. She's a great writer. It's funny at times. She really does. And that's, that's a, a talent. It's a real gift. It's fast. It's a fast moving book. It's a little bit fun to read because it's got you know, celebrity stuff in it and things like that. And depending on what age you are, I was a little older than this. She was on Nickelodeon. I think it was Nickelodeon, possibly. It was a really popular show. iCarly was the name of the show. I, I don't think I ever saw it. But, you know, it was a very, very popular show. And, and she didn't want to do it, but she did it. And she developed a terrible eating disorder and all of that. And, uh, but she's healed now and she wrote the book. So in this case, the narcissist is... Her mother. It's not a story I think that a lot of us are going to really relate to exactly. But you know, you still might be able to in some way if you, you know, say you were a star athlete or something, you, you went and did things to please your narcissistic parent, perhaps. And perhaps they were not even that good for you. Perhaps they were things that your parent wanted you to do, not your own best interest. 
And that would be, that would be, you know, a, a parallel with her. Jeanette McCurdy was six years old when she had her first acting audition. Her mother's dream was for her only daughter to become a star, and Jeanette would do anything to make her mother happy. So she went along with what mom called calorie restriction, eating little and weighing herself five times a day. She endured extensive at-home makeovers while mom chided, Your eyelashes are invisible, okay? You think Dakota Fanning doesn't tint hers? She was even showered by mom until 16 and was also forced to share her diaries, email, and her entire income. I'm glad my mom died, Jeanette recounts all of the, this in unflinching detail, just as she chronicles what happens when the dream finally comes true. Cast in a new Nickelodeon series called iCarly, she is thrust into fame. Though mom is ecstatic emailing fan club's moderators and getting on a first-name basis with the paparazzi, Jeanette is riddled with anxiety, shame, and self-loathing which manifests into eating disorders, addiction, and a series of unhealthy relationships. These issues only get worse when soon after taking the lead in the iCarly spin-off, Sam and Cat, alongside Ariana Grande, her mother dies of cancer. Finally, she, she, after discovering therapy and quitting acting, Jeanette embarks on a recovery and decides the, for the first time in her life what she really wants. Told with refreshing candor and dark humor, I'm Glad My Mom Died is an inspiring story of resilience, independence, and the joy of shampooing your own hair. How to Leave Your Psychopath by Maddie Anholt. Okay, this is part memoir, part self-help book about uh, narcissistic abuse and psychopaths, and, and so it gives you a lot of definitions and a lot, a lot of you know, stuff about how these relationships work and all of that. It is also humorous, as you can tell by the title. None of these books are about a, a long-term marriage where there were kids and there was a bunch of devastation in a marriage situation. See, that one's about childhood, that one's about childhood, this is about a relationship, this is about a relationship, and this one's again about childhood. So, they're not a situation like mine. This, these are stories that are much more straightforward. So yeah, it describes how a narcissistic relationship goes, the pain of that, and how uh, upside down they are. She, I think, walks us through a couple relationships and, you know, how they work and why they're so baffling. One thing about this one was that she had a great relationship with her family, so there was not like a, a big bunch of insight into how she came to be in this relationship. First of all, if it's only a romantic relationship, that's, that's totally you know, way different than if it's, you know, your family. But if you go through a toxic relationship and your family's on your side and they're there and supportive of you and they're still there when it breaks up, that's great. That's the way it should be. That's a whole lot different than if you're in a marriage and you're being abused and then your family takes their side, which, you know, happened in my case. It's happened in other cases too. There's other YouTubers that that's happened to. But, you know, that's just, that's a different kind of a story. So we'll see if there's going to be an audience for it. But this one keeps it light. This one doesn't have to be uh, people that know a whole lot about narcissistic abuse. She calls them controls, and that way she could kind of lump them all in together. Step forward, comedian Maddie Engel. So she is basically a comedian, and so I would say, you know, Jeanette McCurdy is also a comedic actress. Understands firsthand how easy it is to fall into the hands of these narcissistic personality types, or as she dubs them, controls. Maddie knows only too well the havoc that these charming, charismatic, yet life-trampling controls can play, and more importantly, how to wiggle free. Maddie pairs darkly entertaining autobiographical anecdotes with bite-sized psychology that she learned the hard way. The book is the ultimate guide to recognizing controlling traits, picking up unhealthy patterns, and permanently purging the psychos. So, you know... Clever, and I think that, and I, my understanding is that the paperback is coming out with a different title. I thought the, the title was it was captivating for people, but I thought it would probably sell pretty well. But um, apparently, it's scaring people, so <laughs> she, she's changing the title for the paperback. Since we're talking about dating, let me go to the next one. This one is "Why Did You Stay" by Rebecca Humphreys. This one is a, a, a celebrity story it got to be a little bit well known. It was a celebrity who was cheating on her, and then she made some kind of social media post, and it got it got all well known and all that kind of stuff. 
But what's, what this book is, and I think possibly what this one is too, the, the, you know, these are girlfriends, you know, this is a romantic relationship. In this case, it's really not that serious of a relationship, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like she was interested in this guy because he was rich and famous. And he wasn't as into her, and so he, you know, got involved with someone else because someone else on her birthday, and it was kind of shitty that he did that. But basically, something that happens to just about everyone. You know what I mean? Just about everyone has a story like this, only maybe they weren't famous. So this one isn't isn't really that, I don't feel, I mean, he may have been a narcissist, but frankly, she might have been too. Uh, you know, she doesn't sound that much like an empath to me. I think there's a lot of narcissism in, in this story, just as there's a lot of narcissism in Hollywood, you know, in LA. I never really wanted to write a book. All I ever really wanted to do at any given moment is dance about to gay songs, but I need to. I need to do it because several years after surviving a relationship, one that culminated in the bin fire of all breakups, I am still seeing with my own eyes some of the coolest, cleverest, sexiest women allowing their brilliance to be drained in the name of love. I need to do it because, as Jane Fonda says, once you know what's wrong and you stay silent, then you're part of the problem. And although no one actually has to answer a BS victim-shaming question like, why did you stay? I hope that my choice to reclaim it will empower anyone who feels as lonely in their story as I once did in mine. Okay, you guys, I'm going to stop there because the video was just getting way too long. But please do come back because I've saved the very best for last. So you want to catch part two. All right, thanks a lot. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and share in the comments. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I'd like to know your point